This is our harvest fall dinner, and we're so grace, grateful tonight that we're going to be able to share it with our, a lot of our family from three different churches. As you know, we're from Abingdon Episcopal, my sister Pat and Mike. We're from Trinity Episcopal in Martinsburg, West Virginia. Our niece Sarah. Sarah Egan from St. Paul's Alexandria, Old Town. With their son Liam and Tim, our photographer. <laughs> Father, as we gather at this meal to celebrate the abundance you have blessed us with, let us remember the not so fortunate among us. Show us how to use your abundance in ways that support your creation and nurture your earthly flock. Make us mindful that your guidance is sometimes subtle, at times coming from the perceived least among us. Bless those who are prepared, who have prepared this meal, and embrace the celebrants of this harvest dinner. In your son's name, we ask for these things. Amen. 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 Peace be with you. Peace. 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 Well, good evening, and welcome to this, our 2020 Harvest Dinner. It's quite, quite a different year, hasn't it? This pandemic has changed a lot of things that we do. And it's certainly changed in the way that we gather for this dinner here tonight. I record this video to share some of my thoughts. Um, as you'll know, remember, if you've attended a past dinner, I often take one element of our life together and raise it up. The purpose of our Harvest Dinner is that we give thanks for who we are and what we are as a community of Christ before we receive any pledge cards, before we think about anything financially, we pause to give thanks. In the past, I've focused my attention on things that are a little different. Uh, one year, I focused on the aisle that runs up and down my, our church about how that gives us a, a grounding of who we are as people. Well, tonight I'd like to focus a little bit on something different. It's probably something that you're sitting at right now, a table. Um, tables come in many shapes and forms. They are there for us when we have meals and friends. They are used around our house as bedside tables. And as we make crafts, they are available to us. Tables are always near us. The table I want to call to your attention is this one, the one we know very well. In some ways, it's a standard, typical table. It is one that has feet to hold it up, four good, sturdy legs doing the work of keeping it upright for us and keeping it up a level we need to be at. It has a good and stable top, and although we don't see the top all too often in this way, it's there as a reminder of that stability that God has in our lives. Like all tabletops, it is purpose. This table has seen the years and has the cracks to show for its age, the workmanship. And sometimes we need to just pause and take a look at a different angle to appreciate new details of this, our gathering place. It could be a normal table in the same way that we dress the table when friends are coming over to eat with us or for special occasions. We take time each year, each week, to repair this table, changing the hangings for different colors to represent the seasons that we go through, grounding us in God's love throughout the year. A simple cloth uh, made of embroidered fabric, colors that change. A linen cloth that is much like our tablecloths we use at home, serving the same purpose, but also reminding us that this feast that we're bound to, this feast that we're gathered at, is one that God has prepared for us. 
Like all gatherings that we have at our home for dinner, candles are set out so that we may see what we're about doing and be reminded of God's goodness. That's a table. We prepare this table for the Eucharistic meal each week by bringing together the elements that have significant for us, that carried the body and blood of Christ for us, and that gather us together in this ritualized way of remembering God's presence. Our dinner is not complete without remembering the words that God gave to us, the words that Jesus spoke at his Last Supper, and the words that we use to institute this, our Holy Communion. We light the candles as a reminder that God's presence is with us and that the light of Christ will be in our lives at this table and at all tables. And as we gather around this table, prepared as we are, we remember that no matter how far we are, the distance that may take us physically, spiritually, we are always connected to God's presence. At this harvest dinner, we gather at different tables around our diocese, tables with friends, tables alone, tables in our kitchen, but we remember the table that Christ has set for us, the table that makes us a community in Christ, and together we are one. Let us give thanks for the many places in our lives and tables that God has set for us. Amen and blessings to you.